Hey everybody, and welcome to Small Group Testimonies, a Grace Church podcast. My name is Chris. I'm one of the pastors here at Grace, and today I'm going to be interviewing uh, Steve Beatty. He's our small group key ministry leader for sports ministries, and today I'm going to ask him the same question I've been asking everybody else, which is, what impact has small groups had in your life? But before we get into that, Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm yeah. doing okay. was uh, out with our small group last night. Having nice. Having dinner, yeah, um, and then we went and saw the the chosen. Nice. Yeah. That's season. That's episodes one through three, right? One through three. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, it's actually season four, episodes one through three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, long. It's very good. Very, very good. Do they have like Lots an intermission in it? Or? They do. After oh, okay. the first two, they have an intermission, and then you watch the third. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Highly recommend it. Highly okay. recommend it. But nice. Kind of uh, had a, a little bit of a of an impact from that uh, this morning actually yeah. uh as i mentioned to you earlier i, I was uh, i've been kind of cutting back on the carbs yeah and so i went out and you know when we went to go to the movie i love popcorn bought me some big bucket of popcorn yeah and uh you know with the popcorn comes the you know 15 liter <laughs> size <laughs> yeah. size drink they and don't make so, them small <laughs> oh no, my gosh and uh yeah so we get the diet coke right but yeah. uh, your body doesn't sometimes know the difference between in, in carb intake between diet and 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 regular so my body was craving that soda mm-hmm. so i polished it off and yeah. man, the caffeine was like crazy so it kept me up until 3 a.m. this morning. <laughs> That's incredible yeah. and painful at the same time. Yeah, same. But <laughs> I'm glad that you're still agreeing to record this with me in the morning. Um, it's not super early, but, yeah. you know, it's still. That's good. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, awesome. And for those of you guys who don't know, Steve is actually my stepdad. And for the testimony that I've shared in the past about how I watched my parents growing up and, you know, making small groups a priority, Steve was really formative in that. And he was... Um, the father figure that I watched making that a priority in not only my mom's life, but in the rest of our lives too. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, just a little bit of background coming from our conversation. I also know that Steve was highly addicted to um, Diet Coke when he was, uh, when I was younger. (laughs) So this story is just like, hopefully he's not relapsing here. (laughs) I'm just just kidding. But um, for real, and the, the big question of the day, which is, uh, what impact has small groups had in your life? Like, how did it kind of all come together? How did you kind of step into that? Yeah. Um, thanks for asking uh, about how did it come together? Because I think a little bit of historical, yeah. you know, how, how it came about is, is kind of important, at least in my mind. So um, I came to Christ in 1981, way back in 1981. Yeah. Um, and it was out in college. Mm. where I had just moved away from home, um, was kind of in a foreign land, um, met a friend who was you know, passionate about leading me to Christ and, and did lead me to Christ, but mm. I didn't really have my, my community, yeah. right? I didn't really have my family around, didn't have my friends around. All I had were a few fe- people that I had met at college before college had actually started, so I hadn't even started classes. Oh, so yet. it was just like the summertime, kind yeah, of? yeah, yeah, well, late summer. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, my friend led me to Christ, and the very first thing that she recommended was getting into a community of Christians. So on mm. campus, there were a number of Christian organizations, and the one that that she was in and encouraged me to be a part of was InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. That's awesome. IV. Yeah. Yeah. So um, got a chance to meet a number of people uh, in, in that community and became a part of that smaller group of Christians, yeah. uh, who helped to kind of form my view of the world at that point, right? Mm. Cause it had changed. I came to know Christ and, yeah. you know, just my view of the world was so warped before, you know, from before Christ. And now it's a, a new way of looking at the way that I should be living my life for Christ. And so they, they helped to form that, <clears throat> um, Step two of that was providing a mentorship, mm. somebody that was a mature Christian. Yeah, that uh, Peter Kirsten. I remember. I remember his name very specifically. Shout out to Peter. Shout out to Peter. <laughs> yeah, uh, who who mentored me. Yeah, um, in in very formative times about you know how to do how to study the Bible, mm. how to pray, um, how to be in community even. Right. Yeah. So uh, very formative times. So. Um, that kind of opened my eyes to the importance of living, you know, your life in community. Yeah. Um, fast forward to um, the family moving up to New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, and uh, getting to 
getting, you know, finding Grace Church. Yeah. Uh, and this was the late 90s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of like right around when you were born. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and at that time, they had, you know, kind of a, a push for small groups. Mm. Um, and so that was really my first real introduction to small groups, kind of the way that they are typically practiced in churches today, mm. um, where you have a group of, of, of people that, you know, um, maybe 10, 10 people, uh, yeah. five families, six families, something like that, that meet on a regular basis um, yeah. for Bible study or for uh, prayer or for, uh, you know, just to have great fellowship like we did, you know, going to see The Chosen and going to dinner last night. Yeah. Um, so that was my first introduction in, in the late, late, late 90s. And that's where I really developed a passion for small groups. Mm. Um, it, it, that's where I really saw the impact that it had on my life, mm. my wife's life, my kid's life, mm. and the impact that I could have on others' lives, yeah. you know, being able to be used by Christ in other people's lives. Yeah. Um, and so that, that group happened to be um, uh, married with children group. So yeah. everyone had kids. And so we, we, we met once weekly. Um, we got a chance to um, celebrate life together. Yeah. Um, we got a chance to, to, to address challenging times, relationship issues that pi- people might be having yeah. in, in, in the context of a, of a Christian worldview. Yeah. Um, being able to go through tough times together. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that early time was very formative and gave me a passion for mm. small groups. And, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. Passion, I think, is important in, in wanting to be involved in something because yeah. you, you really need to find a why. What is it? What, what am I going to get out of this? Yeah. If you become passionate about something, you can really make it a love. Right? Yeah. And it like... Um... It gives you a vision too for it, right? So like it, the passion that you have, you're passionate about it and you know, yeah, you know the why. You know it's because it allows for you to have an impact in people's life because it exposes what Peter Scazzaro would call your shadow side, you know? And it's like, that's like all the, like the mixed emotions and imbalanced motives and like all these kinds of, you know, kind of ugly parts of you. But in the context of a small group, it exposes them, but then graciously kind of reconciles them to become more like Christ. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so beautiful about a small group because a lot of people have like this fear of like, uh, oh, I don't want to get too close to someone. If I get too close, they're going to see me. But the beauty of a small group is you can be seen and then you can be loved mm-hmm. and you can be made more like Christ. Right. You know, and I think that's what you're like, that's one of the huge things you were talking about right. it. And it was just like ringing that bell in my head where it's right. like, oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Um, so that's that's really cool. And and even just to see how formative it was in your, um, I mean, like after you came to know Christ and kind of setting you in like a right foundation in your adulthood, how it kind of set you in a right foundation too in terms of how to interact with the body too. That's what's so cool about um, small groups. And that's why I, I love to say that like change happens in the context of mm-hmm. community. Mm-hmm. Two huge parts of your testimony involve community, yeah. like small group community, yeah. you know? yeah, That's what's so awesome. So yeah. yeah, thanks for sharing that. I mean, there's like so many questions that I want to ask you about like, you know, how did InterVarsity like work at the time and everything, but we don't have to get into that right now. We can talk about that in maybe a later episode or something because college small group ministry is really cool too. And yeah. I know your sister is really involved in crew. that. Yeah, yeah, and crew. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess my my second question that I was going to ask you, you already, you already answered it, which was just like, who encouraged you to go to a small group? But maybe the question that I could ask is, how did the church at the time encourage you to step into a small group? You were kind of saying that when you came to Grace, the church was going through like this thing. What did that look like at the time? Um, Well, uh, at that time, there were periods where they would do some recruiting, just similar to what you're doing now with small groups. There were periods of of recruiting. And, um, you know, again, we had moved up. Well, not again, but we had moved up to New Jersey your mom's family's in Costa Rica, my family's in, in Florida, yeah. right? Again, in a situation where we don't have a community, yeah. per se, so Grace was our community. Yeah. And um, 
and it was an encouragement to kind of get into deeper relationships. The, the recruiting was, you know, get, you can get into deeper relationships with folks, and that that appealed to us, right? Is mm. that because we we needed uh, that uh, in our lives? Yeah. And so, um, not only just to to practice that in in the context of of our life with Christ. Yeah. So. Um, we got in, involved in the small group uh, at that time, and and I think there were like maybe six families with oh my gosh, probably fifteen kids. Wow. Sarah Eisbacher used to be oh used yeah. to come now over Sarah and babysit. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. She used to come over and babysit, and uh, you know, we we just we were a family. We became yeah. a family, and and then as a part of the passion that we all had for what was going on yeah. and how Christ was working in our lives. We birthed multiple small groups over and over again. So mm. we we went from one to two to four and on. Yeah. Um, but we never lost, even though we were the birthing, core. we never lost the core. Right. Yeah. We always said, "Hey, you know, they're part of my family. I, that's that's you know yeah. a little tugging on my heart to see them kind of meet on their own without us." So we yeah. we used to have. You know, once monthly or once every couple of months, get-togethers where we all get together and you yeah, know, kind the of original fellowship, group. the original group fellowship, yeah. and and you know, we at that time it was in the fledgling days of of uh, the internet, and they had tools, a tool that I found online called the AT and T Net Fridge. And we used to <laughs> each, each group used to take pictures and yeah. post on the Net Fridge of the things that are going on in their lives, and and again, staying in that community, and yeah. and also posting, you know, who's doing what when, so that you know we knew when groups were meeting, we knew when they were doing something fun that we could join them in. Yeah. So really, it just it super super formative in our lives, and mm. really just passion for small group grew at that point to the point where I eventually you know, led my own groups yeah um, I got involved in in groups outside of just Bible studies those were primarily Bible studies but got involved in other groups that um, like run for God yeah uh, that was an affinity based group right and yeah that was um, about running and walking uh, and kind of getting your body in motion uh, and uh, and at the same time, learning how that parallels our walk with Christ, that our, our yeah. walk with Christ is not a sprint, it's mm. an endurance race. Mm. Um, and um, that endurance needs support from others to help you through the challenges that occur in that. Yeah. Um, and it's also, Run for God, just a little plug here, Run yeah. for God's also an, an amazing testimony for others. Yeah. Um, because you can you know, go to an event a uh, run walk event like a 5k or yeah. you know we we've done the Roxbury 5k a number of times with run for god and we would gather together in the middle of the in the middle of the field hold hands and say a prayer right in the middle of of um, you know the the race folks right yeah yeah um and that, so that's a testimony to others to the point where you know we started doing that in 2013 yeah to the point where we're now called the God people when we go, when we go to that's the kind of awesome yeah 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 and so we wear we wear shirts that have Grace Church on the back and you know have uh, you know run for God on our chest and yeah frequently are asked so tell me what's what's this run for God thing wow or where's Grace Church right? that's awesome so it's an amazing testimony yeah that's so awesome. And I, I think that's probably like the clear segue for me to take, but I'm not going to take it yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask, like, because I, I know that for a lot of people, and I'm, I'm not asking you to solve everyone's problems, but just to share your own testimony of how were you able to prioritize making small group a consistent part of your life, even though you had six kids that from a blended family with musicians and athletes and, you know, every kind of whiz passion and possible, you know, like how is it? And you're like definitely business oriented in terms of like your career. Um, like how, how is it that in the midst of all that craziness, you were able to find time to, to like lead run for God or be a part of a small group and, you know, go to church. Like how, how were you able to do that? Yeah, and I'd, I'd have to say up front, it, it didn't happen perfectly all the time, right? Yeah. There were periods of time where we had ended a small group and then we're kind of taking a breath before we decided to, to, to do something else. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think I go back to the word passion. Mm. If you have passion for something, 
It's yeah. something you will find time to do. Mm. And um, I'll st- I, I'll steal a question. I know that you're going to ask me at the end is what would I do to encourage people yeah. to join a small group? Yeah. Um, uh, you won't know what you're missing. You won't know about how important this can be in your life mm. until you try it. Wow. And um, I, I can I can. I can look at numerous people who I've been involved with in small groups, and I, I tell you, the, the, the amount of joy that people get out of small groups, not only coming closer to, to Christ, going walking through tough times together, um, celebrating together, um, seeing each other mature in Christ, um, the mentoring you can provide to people, the mentoring you can get from others. Yeah. It, it just, you develop this, this craving Mm. for that community, yeah. that smaller community. Yeah, it's great to be in the larger, you know, church community when, on Sunday on Sundays, right? Yeah. Um, but you're not going to know the needs of all the people at church. You're not going to know mm. that this person really needs prayer right now they're, because they're going through tough times in their life. Mm. You just don't have the time to spend with, you know, a thousand people on a Sunday yeah. morning kind of doing that. Yeah. Whereas if you're meeting in a smaller group consistently and and folks get a chance to, you know, share what yeah. they're going through in their life, you get to know, oh my gosh, you know, this person has um, is going through a, a really challenging medical situation. Yeah. Or this person's, you know, relationships are, are really challenging right now. We need yeah. support, right? Yeah. We need prayer. Yeah. Uh, we need to, you know, to know what the word says about what, what I'm going through. So yeah. there's a passion that draws you to it. So it goes back to your question. There's a passion that draws you to it. Yeah. Uh, but then there's also the um, the discipline mm-hmm. um, that needs to come back in. Right. You can be passionate about something, but then you know if you if if you if the ha- if that the habit yeah if that habit you know yeah. starts to starts to to fade. Or, or is is less important at that time. Yeah. Um, that's where you know you really need to be disciplined to know that this is something that we are commanded to do. Right. You yeah. Look at Hebrews and Paul saying, you know, you guys don't gonna, neglect. Yeah. Don't neglect. Right. Meet together. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. You have to do it. Yeah. So it's something that's important in in your Christian walk. Yeah. Totally. And I I think that statement of you're not gonna know what you're missing. You know, like this week. This week was like a really hard week for me. But on Thursday is when my small group meets. And like Thursday at the beginning of the day, I was like, I cannot wait to be with my small group Mm. and share with them like how I need them praying over me. You know, like I know that there is this like these people with open arms waiting for me at the end of the day, you know, and that is what we are all longing for, right? you know, to be seen, to be prayed over, to be loved, you know, to not have to bear your burden alone. Like that's the beauty that's kind of, right. but it's hard to know how warm that embrace is until you've like You're found there. it. Right. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> now that I've already given up the great segue, I'm going to segue now. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. No, it's not you. It was me. I, I went deeper in that. But um, the question of, uh, so why are you so passionate about small about sports small groups in particular? Because that's that's like your niche. That's where you're at. You've led Run for God before. And now you're kind of overseeing all of these different sports mm-hmm. ministries that we have here mm-hmm. at Grace. And there's a lot. And they're kind of booming. And we have a new one starting up for uh, basketball. Yep. Second which group. yeah which should by the time this is out already have started for like three weeks so if you're interested in that you know reach out to steve seth. Seth. Yep. Well, St- or seth yeah yep. on the um grace listing and we'll get you hooked up to that because that'd be awesome yeah. but why are you so passionate about sports ministries well it starts with I mean, kind of history yeah, <laughs> yeah historical view it starts with taking that step and and saying okay it's that uh, you know i heard you know, this Run for God group um, was going to start up. Yeah. Um, and Dave Hickey got up there and kind of gave some encouraging words about how this could change your life. Yeah. Your mom and I were on the worship team at that at, on that Sunday. We, we were sitting on the piano bench and mm. we looked at each other and we said, we should do that. Because mm. we were very couch bound at that time. I'd never been involved in any, any you know, sports activity, m- musician. Yeah. Right. And so we said, we should do that. Yeah. Um, and that step of faith, that step of God calling us to that, um, led to 
just changed my life. You know this. Yeah. You were, <laughs> I watched it happen to the both of you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that changed our life. And um, it goes back to passion, right? Yeah. That we, we saw the change that God did in our lives. Mm. And, and not just the physical change. It's the community. Yeah. Uh, that he that he built in in that in that small group. Yeah, uh, it's the um, it's the the uh, the service that we had. We went and served together. Mm. We we did you know we, we're you know we're we're family. Yeah, and so uh, that led to um, really a passion about and 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 an insight to how sports can impact mm. um, one's walk with Christ. Yeah, right. Especially for those sports that are endurance yeah. based, right? Because again, our there's so many parallels with our Christian walk, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there it's not a sprint. Yeah, it, it's it's a long term commitment, and you know, and and need to stay with it and get encouragement from others, yeah. right? And learn what it means to endure. Yeah. And uh, many Bible passages. I know, I'm thinking they're all like all rushing through my head. I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's like Paul uses so many illustrations of like, you know, at, like an athletic illustration for, for faith all the time mm -hmm. that it's such an easy parallel to kind of like step into that because, because of the strain that your body goes through, because of the like just natural desire to be like, okay, I'm too tired. I'm going to give up, you know, because of the practice, the discipline that kind of comes in on that stuff. And like you were even talking about, like making a habit of community. That's, we talk about that. We talked about that three weeks ago now at this point, because we're recording this three weeks before that comes out. But tomorrow I'm talking about community, you know, and, and I'm talking about how that's a habit. Like you can't let go of like that same habit. So mm -hmm. that, I mean, totally makes sense. And, and again, like Paul's illustrations are like endless in scripture about that. But, right, yeah. right. Yeah, I am also excited about uh, our sports, sports small groups because it's a great opportunity to invite Friends. the community, yeah, the outside, you know, grace, the community outside of grace, yeah, into grace. Very approachable. And, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, we've got basketball groups, we've got volleyball groups, we've got. I can't count how many pickleball groups from <laughs> yeah. all, you know, if you're a beginner to an intermediate to an advanced, you yeah. know, all throughout the week, there's plenty of things to do in, in the area yeah. of pickleball. We've got a softball group. We've got Run for God. We've got, um, which is Run and Walk, right? Yeah. And, and we've got uh, the F3 group. Yeah. Um, that it's is a men's group. workup group. And workup it's like group. a national group, too. Yes. So, like, if you join that group here in Randolph, you could go anywhere in the U.S. and find right. an F3 three group there right. too to plug into. Right, right. And it's something, there's something for everyone. Yeah. And I'll just call out, you know, two situations where this is exemplified. Mm. We've got a, a, a guy that goes to Grace that has uh, cerebral palsy. Yeah. Right? Um, who has been a part of the Run for God group and in, yeah. in walks and has done amazing things as yeah. a part of that. Yeah. Um, and so, and we also have had um, a guy who's blind. Yeah. Participate in that, right? Yeah. Who has done amazing things. Yeah. So there really is something for everyone. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and especially if you love one of those sports or if you even want to start a sport that you love. Yeah. That, but it's something we don't offer. It's a great opportunity. It's yeah. a great opportunity. I'd love to see, for instance, I'll throw one out there. I have one too, so go for it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'd love to see a hiking group, mm, right? I'd yeah. love to see, because we got amazing hiking opportunities That's here true. in New Jersey, right? Yeah. I'd love to see a hiking group. I'd love to see a running slash walking group, um, and I've talked to you about this, uh, for Gen... Gen Xers or Gen Zers, right? Gen Zers or Gen, Gen Zers. Xers? <laughs> well, yeah, I know they're two different. Gen Zers, Gen okay. Zers, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, uh, uh, the Run for God seems to be kind of geared for those that are, you know, um, have, you know, are on the couch, have already made their way to the couch, and want to get off the couch. Yeah. But Gen Zers aren't necessarily sitting on the couch, right? Yeah. They're very active people, and yeah. but. They might, you know, they might want to be involved in, in a, in a, in a, in a group like a running group or, yeah. or a walking group. And yeah. I'd love to see that kind of group um, that's focused on that, that uh, demographic uh, come to, to come to being. So what's the one that you would want to see? So I have two now. One oh. is an indoor soccer 
group. Oh, yeah. Like, for the winter, I think that'd be so great. Because yeah. indoor soccer is like, with the futsal ball, it's, like, a little heavier, you know. We have the gym for it. I think it'd be really great. And then the other one is a cycling group, which we have cyclists at the church. Just make a group out of yourselves, you know. <laughs> like There's one in progress. There's yeah. one that's being formed. Okay, I, I have all right. to know that one. Yeah, okay, yeah, good, yeah, good, yeah. yeah. So those two, but, yeah. Because I think they, you know, there's like all these communities that kind of are out there. I, I mean, especially around here, like a soccer group, mm -hmm. pe a place for people to play soccer during the winter yep. and not have to pay like 50 bucks to do it, but then make that like an actual outreach opportunity. That's what's so cool about our sports ministries is that our sports small groups is that they open in prayer, close in prayer, you know, and we are encouraging all of them to share a word too. And there's just like a huge evangelism opportunity in that. Like yes. the other night, you know, Lester's doing a great job with the volleyball small group. And the other night I went and I don't think I, I think I know three people that go there that go to Grace. Mm. And then everyone else is from the outside, wow. you know? And yeah. so it's like, yeah. what an awesome opportunity yeah. to share our faith with these guys. Yeah. And, you know, then just show them, hey, but we're also, we can also play volleyball yeah. and we can have like a good time and we're not going to try and like, you know, beat you over the head with a Bible volleyball. Right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right, right. Well, it, it, the one of the most effective ways of reaching people for Christ is just living out your testimony. Yeah. And so, you know, just showing them that you are prayerful about your approach to, you know, uh, an activity, right? Yeah. Lord, you know, help me to make it through this healthily. Help me to be used by you, you know, for, yeah. for my competitor's sake. You know, all yeah. those things are, are ways that you can live out your testimony and not, you know, necessarily take the, the, the rough approach of trying to, you know, shovel the Bible down someone's throat. Right? Yeah. Especially yeah. if they're there to play a game, not yeah. necessarily as a part of a Bible study. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome, Steve. I mean, I, I, everything that you shared, I think one is just going to hopefully inspire some people to go and take that step and Absolutely. become a part of a sports small group or really any small group. Um, and then two, I just think that um, it's just like a lot of wisdom that you have, you know, maybe you've someone even out there who's thinking about starting a small group, uh, whether they're in a family context right now, or they're single or kind of whatever season of life there is. I think everyone had an opportunity to kind of glean some wisdom and, um, we're here to support you. You know, if you want to start yes. a, a small group, like we have a structure in place to make sure that you are supported along every step of the way. And we don't want you to allow for anxiety to keep you from, you know, uh, accepting the calling that God is putting on your heart right now. So if you're interested in doing that, then feel free to email me, chris at graceforfamilies.com. I would love to kind of get you on that track. Uh, we're in the middle of our winter spring semester right now, uh, but our summer semester is coming up too. And, you know, if you want to start planning for that, that'd be really cool. And for everybody else, uh, one, we want to thank you for listening. And two, we just want to encourage you to uh, continue to pray for grace and continue to pray for all the small group and all the small group members that are here at the church. And we look forward to talking with you next time. Bye.